Yo, what's up, guys? It's Aptrix here. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the official Ryujinx emulator Android mobile version, which was under development before the Ryujinx emulator was completely taken down. Now, this is the last token which we can consider from the Ryujinx emulator team. It hasn't been officially launched though, but the official Ryujinx emulator mobile version was under development for both iOS and Android devices. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Android build, and I'll be talking about if it is actually better than the other Nintendo Switch emulators for Android, like the Uzui emulator, new show, Xeon emulator or even Pine emulator, Stratos, Skyline etc. So with that being said, let's get started. Now if you tap on your user icon, you will be able to see the Ryujinx emulator logo and if you go to settings, you get a lot of settings such as being able to import your firmware and set up the emulator itself. But if we go to system, you will be able to see NCA support was already added including vSync options, PTC, dock mode which you can enable or disable and also the performance mode to utilize the full potential of your Android device. But not just that guys, we also had some advanced graphics settings such as shader cache, uh, resolution scaling, texture recompression and even support for custom turnip drivers. Now I have already set up the Ryujinx emulator Android beta build on my Android device and unfortunately this emulator will never get updated that is the sad fact about it. I always knew that Ryujinx emulator will someday release their Android version but before they made this emulator officially public to everyone well they got taken down nonetheless here we go we also get on screen touch controls motion controls and switch controller layout well with all of these settings out of the way you'll be able to see i have successfully set up the ryujin simulator android we get the search feature as well as the refresh button at the bottom now it is recognizing my games perfectly fine so what are we waiting for let's jump right into the testing of first game that is going to be sonic mania now I won't be testing out all the games which I have on my Android device in today's video but at the top left corner you'll be able to see in Sonic Mania we are literally getting 100 plus FPS while emulating this game. Well it is a 2D title anyways but this much amazing performance literally means that if this emulator ever was released then it would have been one of the best Nintendo Switch emulators for Android devices. Just take a look at this the gameplay is super smooth like vSync has been disabled that's why we are getting the best amount of FPS possible. And yeah, it is just so absolutely amazing. At the top left corner, once again, we are getting more than 150 FPS, sometimes 160 FPS. I mean, it is a very sad feeling that this simulator never got to see the day of light because Raging Simulator team not even caring about the Android community. Obviously, it's a headache. Nonetheless, we'll just go ahead and exit our game and test out our next game, which is going to be One Piece Unlimited World. And as you guys can see, our emulator just crashed. So let's try opening the game once again. Now first of all you have just noticed that this simulator also has some crashing issues. Nonetheless I'll just go ahead and start a story mode game. Once again you'll be able to see the FPS bar which is showing us around 600-800 FPS. Oh my god what's going on bro. Let me just go ahead and skip this cutscene by pressing the plus button. And the control layout seems similar to that of Lemurad emulator for some reason. Do let me know in the comment section down below if you can see the resemblance. Nonetheless I'll press the plus button multiple times and there we go our game has successfully started. Now at the top left corner you'll be able to see we are getting 100 plus FPS even in this game but there we go the game just crashes so this emulator was not stable by any means it is not like the other emulators just take a look at this now it has opened in a stretch screen format but the performance which I am seeing is nothing like before like just take a look at this this is literally 1x graphics resolution Nintendo Switch emulation on our Android devices of the One Piece game and you'll be able to see there are no graphical issues like I can't believe I am saying this but in this game there are no graphical issues uh, the resolution is very very sharp and the FPS is more than enough my device isn't overheating my device isn't heating up at all which means that this emulator was probably very stable and comparable to pine emulator in terms of FPS so obviously it is getting more FPS than the folks of that other emulator which was taken down nonetheless the next game that we'll be trying out is going to be Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Trilogy and as you will be able to see most of these games literally crash before even getting started then you gotta reopen the emulator and then it actually starts working. This uh, makes me very happy because I have seen the development of many emulators for Android when your game crashes continuously but then it actually starts or you get a brand new emulator update and your favorite game starts working now. It's a great feeling. Nonetheless, as you will be able to see, our Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm trilogy has successfully started. So most of the games actually boot and go in-game. Let me just go ahead and skip this part. And there we go. I didn't have to skip anything. The emulator literally crashed. And if we try out other games like Legends Arceus, 
you'll be able to see it directly crashes so it did not support at least on my android device it's not working the game just crashes the emulator crashes most of these high-end nintendo switch titles do not work inside this emulator and i guess that is it for the Ryujing Simulator Android version. You will be able to see all of these games just for stock and they do not run inside of this emulator. Nonetheless, I really think that this had a very bright future if it was actually released to the public and if it was in active development. Do let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this emulator. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and peace out.